Now these, they're not adjustable sights, but they're adjustable sights. You know, they're dovetailed and it's got a set screw on the top and you just drift it over however many thousands to get it, get it sighted in. But that's the thing, I'm going to show you all the easy way to do it without wasting a whole bunch of ammunition. Instead of guessing, I figured up the math and the formula, or I've calculated the formula and figured up the math that you need to use to be able to make these sight adjustments accurately using a couple precision tools and you're not out there burning up ammunition that right now in this political climate you, you may want to hang on to. So we're going to go ahead and take it apart and get started. Now the first thing you've got to do, you've got to know what your sight radius is. So we're going to go ahead and measure it from the very the notch of the rear sight to the front of the front sight and that's looking at seven inches. Alright, so what I want to show y'all is a formula well, I'm going to show you the results of a formula that I come up with a few years ago on how to be able to make sight adjustments accurately with only, you know, having to maybe fire one or two shots after you make the adjustment. Now, if you, if you go ahead and you check your zero and you measure it, which I did at 25 yards, I checked my zero and I was an inch and a half to the left of zero. So... It, it, what you got is if for every inch of sight radius it's point zero 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 three ten thousandths of an inch is one minute angle all right so we know that we have hang on let's see point zero 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 three times a seven inch sight radius and so that comes up with for every minute of angle of adjustment that we want is going to be right at two thousandths. Now, we're going to multiply that times six because I'm an inch and a half off. All right. So remember, a minute angle at twenty-five is a quarter, fifty is a half, so on and so forth. So we're going to multiply times six because that's an inch and a half. And so we need to come over about twelve and a half thousandths. I'm going to shoot for thirteen. So all we're going to do is we're going to loosen that set screw. Now I've already got the indicator set up. Now you may not have a mag base and an indicator, you know, like this, but you don't have to. I mean, you can pick them up pretty cheap at Harbor Freight, you know, if you wanted to. But you can also use dial calipers, and you can get them cheap, and you just run them out like that and slide it until it touches the side of the slide. Now this isn't going to be quite as easy, but it's going to be real freaking close. Okay, now I'm going to use this little brass punch. You, you know, you can use Delron, you can use an aluminum, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be softer than whatever the parent metal is that you're whooping on. And I never had no issues with a little brass punch. But now keep in mind, alright, so we were shooting to the left. And we want to go right. On the rear sight, you go in the direction that you want to go. But if, if uh, say, I was making a front side adjustment, then I would go, I would chase the bullet hole. All right, so the rear sight, essentially you're chasing your point of aim. And if you have to make a front side adjustment, you're chasing the bullet hole. So anyway, I've gone ahead and zeroed out my indicator. And let's go ahead and tap on it a little bit. All right, well, I went a bit, little bit too far. I uh, just went out and tested it. Uh, I would also like to report a tragic death in the family. The, uh, my original Starrett number 196 indicator, it chipped a bed on me while we were making that adjustment, which made me go too far, I thought. So anyway, we're gonna come back five thousandths. I think it's gonna do the trick. So I've already loosened everything up. All right, we got her sighted in. We're gonna take her out there and fire a shot, and see see where she's at. I think she's gonna be good. Uh, and anyhow, as y'all know, my uh, very first indicator 
died on me. And I was, after, you know, suffering through grief, I, I finally decided to hell with that. I'm not replacing her. I'm not going to get another one to uh, fill the gap, the void that's in my heart. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring her back to life. I mean, that's what this channel is about, is keeping machines death proof. And uh, if y'all want to follow the, the saga of the resurrection of the 196 indicator, I'll put a link and y'all can follow along and see. I mean, I can't tell you. I've never took an indicator apart. I took scopes apart, rebuilt scopes and stuff like that. I mean, it's a you know fine instrument, but there's one tool I need to buy to get the needle off and we can get down in there and uh, figure out what's going on. So let's get out there, fire a shot, see where she's at. Call that good. I'm gonna go get a beer. It's the end of the day. A minute here. See you on the next one.